Hi Cleveland, I'm Kerry Howard, Chief Director of Cleveland's Department of Public Safety. With me today is Fire Chief Anthony Luke and Deputy Commissioner of Emergency Medical Services, Christopher Shapin. How are you gentlemen doing? Good, sir. Very good. We're here to talk, talk to the public about your divisions, kind of what you're doing uh, throughout the summer, plans for the fall, and uh, to talk about it as a career, your division as a career uh, for aspiring uh, citizens who want to be part of public safety. Um, let's start off with you, uh, Chris uh, Shapin. Um, talk to us. What do you guys have going on this summer? Well, this summer we've got a lot of things going on. Uh, we are currently about to hire a class of about 15 to 20 people. They will start in August. Uh, we are going to be performing rapid response training mm -hmm. for the City of Cleveland employees. We're starting with the City Council, uh, the Mayor's Cabinet. Uh, we've had very good response with that. Once we get that complete, we're, we're looking to expand that out to um, the hopefully the rec centers and eventually the schools. Okay. We, what that is, the rapid response training for us is what we call it. It's training in CPR, AED, first aid, stop the bleed, and then treatment for an opioid overdose. Okay. What value is it to the public to know that there are folks out there who have received training from EMS to respond to emergency medical situations? Well, with a lot of our things, it's, it's all time. You know, how quickly can you get there? And it's basically an extension of EMS. Mm -hmm. They can perform quick, basic first aid training and uh, help until we get there. Okay, that's good to know. And the 15 to 20 people, what positions are those coming on to EMS? Those are uh, EMTs and paramedics. EMTs and paramedics. Uh, Chief Luke, what, what's going on in the, uh, the Division of Fire this hot summer? Uh, we've got a busy summer as usual. Uh, we just placed the new fire boat in service. The citizens will see it down at the 9th Street Pier. Okay. Um, we're doing a lot of training with that. Uh, we're preparing to uh, prep for a new fire training academy in January. Mm -hmm. And we're also going to be taking um, applications for entry tests this October. Okay. Um, in the immediate future, we have an ice cream social event. That's what we call it at our Station 20 mm -hmm. on Pearl Road. That's where we just invite the public in, open up the firehouse. We have uh, ice cream from Honey Hut, hamburgers, hot dogs, uh, uh, adoptable dogs will be there. All the city services will be there. It's just a way for us to show our appreciation to the community. Um, it runs from 11 to 3. We invite everybody to come out. That's beautiful, Chief. I've been down there a few times. I've even taken my my son and some other mentees down there, and the firefighters are fantastic with the letting them uh, interact with their apparatus and, and such. Will they be able to do that this time as well? Yeah, we'll have uh, our recruitment unit down there, the public safety recruitment unit. So okay. whether it's police, fire, EMS, animal control, they'll all be there. And they'll be interacting. And if you want to sit on a fire truck, talk to the firefighters, all that will be available. Okay. Um, later in this year in the fall, we're doing um, a females in firefighting day at our okay. fire training academy. Oh. That's where we're going to invite 20 lucky female applicants down to the training academy and show them what it's like to be a firefighter. Put them in gear. They'll actually go through fire, some trial training. They'll actually go through a fire evolution. They'll deal with the holes. And we're also hoping during that same week that we can do a more general open. Mm -hmm. Same thing. 20 applicants will be taking applications okay. to just anybody that's interested in firefighting. We'll actually show you what it feels like to be a firefighter oh, for that one day. Okay, and so I know you. So you said the application. So the applications are opening in July for the test to take place in October. Do I have yes. that correct? So the week of That's July thirtieth is when applications will open online and the testing will actually occur in October. Yeah, that, right? that testing will occur in October and that will be for a class that we'll be putting on late next year. Okay, so folks should start getting themselves ready now for yes. it. Would you agree? Yes. Okay. And I would advise anybody that's interested, you know, call our recruitment line, 216-664-6388. Fantastic. Now, we know that with summer heat comes different type of, uh, uh, of stressors on folks. How important is it for folks to stay, for citizens, people, right, to stay hydrated during these warm, sum warm summer months? It, it's very important. Uh, most, like all other emergencies, the biggest thing with um, heat emergencies is prevention. Mm. Once you start progressing through the stages of heat exhaustion, heat cramps, you know, heat stroke, it's a pretty quick process. So the best way to avoid that is stay hydrated. Mm -hmm. Drink good fluids, you know, drink water, uh, sometimes some sports drinks, 
you know, alcohol, soda, those can just, those make you feel like you're hydrated, but you're not. It dehydrates the body. It yeah. dehydrates the body. Uh, so staying hydrated, staying cool, wearing cool clothing, mm -hmm. not overexerting yourself. Uh, and I always tell people, check in on your neighbors. You know, if you're, you're elderly neighbors, sometimes they can't regulate the heat that well. Um, check in on them. Check in on the little kids. So is it fair to say that the that young people, right, because yes. this is summertime, is popsicles, sugary drinks, ice cream, mm -hmm. and the elderly are probably the most susceptible to, to heat stroke, heat exhaustion. Absolutely. Uh, any special message for, for, for those who take care of, um, of young people and the elderly and the elderly who, who, you know, of course, who take care of themselves about how important, how they should stay hydrated? Yeah, just drink water regularly. Water. Drink water, cool water regularly. Okay. Don't, don't think, oh, I'm hot now, I'm going to drink a whole bunch of water. Drink, you know, throughout the day. Okay, Cleveland, do you hear that? Water, 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 stay <laughs> hydrated. Chief, you got fires, right? Yes. Um, smoke detectors have proven to be uh, a critical tool to fire prevention and, and saving lives. What, yes. do you, what, what, what message do you have to the public about uh, smoke detectors and other uh, steps they need to take to prepare themselves for early notifications? Uh, smoke alarms is the critical tool. Mm. Um, most fire deaths will occur in occupancies either without smoke detectors or without smoke detectors without batteries in them. Okay. Um, they currently have 10-year detectors that you don't have to change the batteries. Okay. The city of Cleveland offers free smoke detectors to any city resident. Just call the smoke detector hotline 216-361. 5535. Mm -hmm. um, you'll get a voicemail, leave your information. A couple days later, some firefighters will call you asking when can we come out to install the smoke detector. That's an important number, Chief. Can you give it again? It's 216 361 5535. Okay, smoke detector. So you got water and smoke detectors, Cleveland. Chief, if I'm if I'm if I'm in my house and I and I smell gas, what do I do? Um, for smelling any kind of strange smell, like you smell gas, it might be sewer gas, it might be, um, you know, you might have a grill going, it might be a leak on your propane bill. We ask the residents, don't try to figure it out. Mm -hmm. Just call 911. We're more than happy to come out and figure it out for you. We have uh, actual electronic detectors. We can tell exactly what the gas is. We'll tell you where it's coming from and what the resolve is going forward. Leave it to the professional. Yeah, just leave it to the professionals. Right. We're, we're more than happy to come out. And Chief, I mean, when, when, if you smell gas and you, you turn that light switch on, is there a risk of explosion, a risk of uh, creating a situation? If you're in, a, if you're in your home or residence or any other occupancy and you smell gas, the last thing you want to do is activate any electronic devices, mm. including lights, um, even making a phone call on your port on your um, cell phone. Step outside. What you want to do call. is get out the house and then resolve it from there. Okay, okay, good to know, good to know. Now, fire and EMS, we oftentimes hear, um, you know, at council meetings on the news, EMS arrived, fire arrived, there's an emergency, emergency situation. Um, what do the citizens, what should they expect if a fire truck arrives before EMS? Well, the fire department responds in a program we call first responders. Mm -hmm. um, our job is to stabilize the patients for the arrival of EMS who has transport capability mm -hmm. and advanced life support capability. Okay. So we'll be there just to stabilize the patient, to see, um, doing a basic assessment, and then EMS arrives with their ALS and paramedics to transport and provide advanced care. Okay. What do you have to say when, to, to the citizens as you know, an EMS professional? How should they feel the fire shows up before EMS? They should feel relieved because the system worked as it should. Okay. I mean, they, they would call them first responders and they can do EMT level care. Mm -hmm. for, and, and sometimes they can do, they have uh, five advanced life support units that can do everything we can except for transport. Okay. So firefighters are EMTs and paramedics as well. Yes. Is that fair? Yes. Okay. And then EMS, you arrive on scene. How, do you, how does the transition go from taking over care for a patient from fire and EMS uh, uh, leading from there? Yeah, we work with them all the time. And a lot of times it's just a simple communication. We got it. We need some help. There are instances where uh, fire will drive our unit to the hospital so both paramedics can be in the back mm -hmm. uh, treating the patient for a critical patient. Uh, most of the time, they, they hand off, fire says, this is what we got. They give us a run sheet, which has the information of the patient, and they go in service, and we take the patient to the hospital. 
for citizens who, uh, who converse about EMS response time, what do you have to say to them about EMS response time? What's the average time? Uh, our average time is well below the national average, which is nine minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, we, are, we are around seven to eight minutes on average mm -hmm. for all calls. Uh, for our more critical calls, we're down to around six minutes. Mm -hmm. um, with the fire response, they usually are there within four to five minutes. Mm -hmm. um, and that, we, we always strive to strive to do better. Okay. Like until they say that they picked up the phone and we showed up, yeah. we're not doing good enough for me. Okay. Uh, but we always strive to do better, but I, I think we're doing pretty well. Uh, and we're always trying to put more units on the road. That's why we're doing the, mm -hmm. the hiring. We're at, right now we're looking at um, a, making it so that the EMTs, people who are already registered as EMTs and paramedics mm -hmm. can apply all year round. Mm -hmm. And then we're also gonna continue with our classes of hiring people that we train to be EMTs. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're always looking to maintain our full staff so we can have our full complement of units and that we can improve our response time. Absolutely. Now both divisions, uh, fire uh, and EMS, have people in the emergency call center. The people in the emergency call center for the division of fire are firefighters. Yes. The people for, um, for EMS in the emergency call center, uh, those are civilians who take those, those roles, correct? Correct. All right. Do those folks up in the emergency call center, do they work as closely with each other as, you, as you, uh, your folks do on the ground? Oh, yeah, I would say they probably work even closer. They're talking to each other on pretty much all calls. Okay. I think the citizens need to understand that when they call 911 and they get a unit on scene, it's not so much a fire unit, an EMS unit, or even a police unit. Mm. It is a city of Cleveland public safety response. Yeah. We work as part of a system and we work cohesively across the divisions. So that's what they, should think of. You will get somebody on scene to get you connected to the proper resources to resolve your emergency. Mm -hmm. Instead of looking at what color the vehicle is, it shows up. The city of Cleveland is sending a public safety unit out to your location to assist you. Fantastic. Beautiful. Um, talk to us about your careers, right? What has your career meant to you and why should someone who is considering a career in public safety think about EMS and fire? Uh, I, I was just thinking about this earlier. Um, what the, the career has meant to me, it, it's very important part of my life, uh, but it, it is just that a part of my life um, where it's not my whole life. And, uh, but it extends out past, mm -hmm. past uh, just my job. Mm -hmm. I and mean, when you're part of public safety and somebody asks you what you do and you say you're a paramedic, Everybody turns around, everybody looks at you. Uh, they all wanna hear the stories, you know. Uh, and to me, I was thinking about, you know, what my favorite part about the job is. Okay. And quite frankly, it's, it's driving down Kinsman Avenue, coming towards the city, when you go over the hill and you see the cityscape. Spread up, it, yeah. It's just awesome. To me, it's just like, to just to be, know that I'm working, I'm a part of that, uh, I work in that city, it's just, to me, that's, it's just awesome. Chief Lou? Um, similar to what every firefighter would probably tell you, um, it's not a career, it's a, it's like, it's, it's a calling. Um, you become a firefighter instead of firefighting is something that you do. Um, on duty, off duty, it defines who you are, what you do, how you think, who you interact with, and it just changes your life to the point where what you thought was important prior to being a firefighter mm -hmm. kind of moves on and you have a different set of priorities. Mm -hmm. um, it's the most enriching, enriching and um, it just fills my life. Um, and firefighters retiring will tell you that it's almost a bittersweet moment. They hate that they have to retire. Mm -hmm. They wish that they could just continue to do it. Yeah, I mean, you guys, um, I can definitely see the passion. I think the public watching can see the passion and, and hear it in your voice and see it in, in your person behind, behind this desk. What do you have to say to someone who is like, I, you know, I want to apply, but I, don't, I really don't know if I should. And, you know, most people who apply or who have a desire to apply 
they don't have folks around them who are in the profession. Put yourself around them right now and tell them what, uh, what, they, what, what they need to hear to get them to you know, move forward and apply. I guess what I would say is you want to keep your options open. So put yourself in the process mm -hmm. with the knowledge that at any time you can change your mind and you can take another direction. Mm -hmm. But you don't want to close a door to such an enriching career that you just never tried or never exposed yourself to something that you mm -hmm. thought was different or foreign to you. Mm. Okay. Yeah, I would, I would say the same thing. I mean, there's a lot of things you can do as a registered paramedic, and our service is one of those. Um, and a lot of our people will go on to other places, but the reason why they do that is because of the experience that we gave them. And the experience that we give them is unique uh, it's vast, and um, you're not going to get it anywhere else. Mm. So I always tell people, you, you know, if you want to start at EMS, you start at Cleveland EMS, yeah, right. and, and you'll get it all. Okay. Yeah, I can tell you that we, we know that of the exceptional training that the divisions of, of, of uh, public safety, uh, police, fire, EMS, animal care and control get top-notch training, mm -hmm. and, um, and we're always looking to improve. Uh, and we know that because other jurisdictions come and try to poach, mm -hmm. you know, from, from, from our city because of the training that, that we have. But how many years have you been with EMS? 27. Chief? Going on 31. Wow. Wow. Anyone interested in joining the Department of Public Safety, uh, its divisions, uh, EMS, fire, police, animal care and control, call one of the recruiters who deals with the centrally, 216-623-623. 5233. It's 216-623-5233. And one of our fantastic recruiters will reach out to you and give you the information and even help guide you along the process. I want to thank the staff here at TV20 for broadcasting this and other uh, events um, to the citizens of Cleveland. Thank you for partnering with Public Safety TV20. We truly appreciate you. To everyone in Cleveland, have a great evening and stay safe. Mm -hmm.